Hello and welcome to Nature Talk on Aftercast.com, where James and Tina will be your host for the next 30 to 45 minutes discussing nature as we see it. Join us each Wednesday for a new episode of Nature Talk. This is my grandpa's talk show. Hi, this is James and Tina, and welcome to another episode of Nature Talk. And here we are again with another episode on uh, number five. Yeah. Yeah. We we've been uh, we've been kind of watching the stats on our other uh, previous episodes, and <laughs> the first three episodes were all the same numbers. And that that was good because that means everybody came back and listened to it. Yay! Yay! Uh, but <laughs> what, what what was really interesting about it was that was about the numbers, same numbers that we've been running weekly on our uh, geocaching podcast that we've been doing. And the next week and last week, they over doubled. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, quite a bit over doubled, and that we thanks to all the listeners that came out there and supported it and listened to our show. We don't know if they listened to part of it and shut it off and said that the last time I listened to that. <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> but Who's anyway, go? yeah. Anyway, we we uh, we enjoyed seeing them numbers jump up there. I mean, uh, even today. Uh, there's been two more listeners even today on there that joined in, and that's that's unusual. Usually, it, it tops out and stays there for the rest of the week. That's nice to know people are listening. Yeah, they're listening, and uh, we hope they come back and listen to, to each uh, episode we put out because we try and make it interesting, and we've got a lot of comments about it back uh, that, that that it's an interesting show and they enjoyed it and. So, we hope that uh, that means they're going to listen to the, the rest of them, too. Um, this week, we're just going to throw in a few little things that we had come up with over time. And I guess the uh, w- first thing we're going to do is talk about what we did yesterday on uh, uh trip to the beach. That was uh, the, the 5th. Yeah, what was that? When Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we was gonna go to the beach over the weekend, but things didn't work out that way. Well, uh, everybody knows how that goes. So we're sitting here at home all day with an overcast. There's what well, maybe three or four minutes every hour or two we seen the sun pop up. Yeah, it poked its little self out from the clouds. Yeah, so. We're talking about going to the beach, and wow. Well, we found out that uh, I was told that we was seven miles from the beach, and so we set it on our GPS to go there. <laughs> and it said thirteen. It said thirteen. Yeah, we went to uh, the pier there at the Naples Pier there at Naples Beach, and we just got our uh, free parking sticker. A couple of days ago might as well use it yeah so all these people standing there in line waiting to punch their cards and stuff in this parking lot oh it was crowded they had each parking space had a number on it and you have to punch in your uh, space and all that information and everything and then you got to pay I guess you had to pay by a card I don't. The thing didn't look big enough to take money, but who knows? It might might be like a little small ATM machine where it give you change back. Anyway, we just walked right on by because the sign says if you have a, a parking sticker, you don't need to pay. I love the parking stickers. <laughs> yeah, that was that saved us eight dollars right there, if not more. No, nah, it was eight dollars. So that's what what they charge you eight dollars oh, okay. to uh, a trip though. That's each time you go to the beach. Yeah, it could be for one hour, mm-hmm. 30 minutes. Well, we could park there every day for 
a year on that sticker and then go get another free one <laughs> yeah we could if we lived closer to the beach yeah they're 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 free stickers to uh residents of florida or if you own property and just come down for the winter so anyway we got to, to the beach and started taking some pictures right off there at the beginning walked out on the pier just a little bit it's a it's a long pier mm-hmm uh, I have a video of it, and I'll post that uh, to decide where I'm going to post it at and let you know in the show notes where it's at. I'll put the link to it so you can see the videos, and Tina got some pictures, and she took a few pictures of it too. A picture of the pier, a couple sunsets, birds. Yeah. There was a, a large yacht out there, and I was going to put that in the video, but by the time I zoomed in on it and on uh, my tripod, uh, and the pier was made out of wood. And when I set up my tripod, I could see it shake every time somebody took a footstep on that pier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't that it was weak or wobbly or anything. It was just that the tripod what didn't have no buffer between that and the the legs in the in the pier so uh, and there was a sailboat out there I seen this huge fish jump up and in, in back into the water uh, the people out there fishing standing about waist high out there in the, in the water fishing uh, how many selfies did we see out there Wow a lot of people taking selfies yeah, I got but with the water behind them. Yeah, and the thing is, what made it made it look so nice on the video and, and the pictures when it, they're between us and the sunset. Mm -hmm. So all it made was a dark shadow, like of a, a silhouette. Person. Yeah, that was nice. And then there was some women sitting there talking, and they well, you know, they was a little loud until they seen me. <laughs> yeah, they was talking about these men <laughs> they was out on a ladies night yeah what was there four of them i think five maybe four four and so they was enjoying it they all had their lawn chairs sitting there on the beach and had a cooler they had their whatever they was drinking in it and a, a pizza box i seen a pizza box they had pizza yeah they had pizza <laughs> but people down here go to the beach and they take their favorite drink, you know, their wine or whatever. And I don't know if it's legal, but I guess, yeah, maybe it's something that, you know, it's not like a big party going on. I think they do that mainly around 5th and the pier. Yeah. And they toast to the sunset. Mm-hmm. And they go out there every day at, at, at sunset and they take their lawn chairs to sit out there. And just as the sun goes down, you see them toasting. They pick their glass up, toast to the sunset, and drink their drink. Go home. And it, it's amazing, though. Uh, it's almost like a uh, ritual. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. You could call yeah. it that. Or daily, Tradition. Al daily alcoholics. they got to have that one drink. <laughs> they do it at the beach so they can say they're, they're not alcoholics. We all have one drink a day. <laughs> oh, we're toasting another day that we were here. Oh, yeah. that's And, oh, man. We drove down Fifth Avenue. Uh, Fifth <laughs> Avenue in Naples is the most... Uh, it's it's the ritziest. Yeah, it's the ritzy part of town. It's 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 like Sunset Strip in California. Yeah, yeah, that's how we can compare that. And people, all these restaurants on both sides of the road, and all these fine fancy clothes stores, and people they have tables outside with white. Uh, tablecloths, table champagne glasses, and their napkin all folded and standing up and to look like a little sailor sailor mm -hmm. hat or something, you know. Uh, it was it was awesome, and but the only thing I didn't like about that you couldn't smell the food cooking while you was driving. That amazes me with all the restaurants that there were there, and they all had open doors. There was there wasn't like that you had an open door to go in, 
they were open and yeah. uh you would think that man you know drive down here you drive around a shopping center that's got three or four uh family restaurants in there and that's all you smell is different food you know french fries or uh fish or whatever their their restaurant be but there was no smell of food at all and i thought man that i missed that but uh they have little uh walk crossings for people to walk across and signs that says um oh well, they got big fines for not stopping for the pedestrians in the they have the right of way but the little blinking lights that going across the road they're made into the little it's not a really a speed bump it was just a little bitty hump big enough to put some flashing lights across it to let you know that you're up on a crosswalk hmm. so anyway we got all that done and took care of the sunset was 801 if anybody's interested at eastern time that was uh Chicago, listen to me. New York time. Uh, so if anybody watches the video or sees the pictures, they know what part of the country that they was taken in. And it was on the west coast of uh, Florida, southwest Florida. And so we had a good time. And then we stopped on the way back and grabbed us something to eat. Not on Fifth Avenue, though. No, no, couldn't afford that. Oh, wow. Um, but we went on farther down to where we got into our price range. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we splurged. Yeah, we did, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Not something that was $20 a meal, though, no, or more. No, no. It was under 15 for both of us. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's our price range. Yeah. So, anyway, we... Um, we got all these pictures and videos put together and we posted them so i'll let you know uh, uh in the show notes I'll, I'll show up a link to go to the, the those and uh, you can see the pictures and watch the video all right um we was having a lot of rabbits out here and but well, there's one particular rabbit that comes right up to us almost. I mean, what, five feet from us sometimes? Four he, feet, three yeah. feet. Yeah, he's, uh, as long as we sit still, he'll come right up to us. But as soon as you stand up, he'll take off. But we're breaking him in. <laughs> feeding him every day. Yeah, we're feeding him some of that wild rabbit food. And they'll, uh, they're, they're out here all night long, it seems like. <clears throat> Might not be every night, but when they are out here, it's all night long. So I had brought up uh, uh, a little bit about the rabbit, like what we have here. And so we're going to talk about that for a minute or two. Um, yeah, it's getting a little warm in here. We have to shut the everything down when we do our show because it's just too much noise. Uh, we're in a in an RV um, what is it for 35 foot so RV and uh, the air conditioner works real well in here but we have to shut it off because it's just loud so anyway what did I do with those that rabbit here wabbit wabbit oh I've got Let's skip that rabbit for right now, okay? I want to go to this one here. This is this is an interesting story. And I don't know. Uh, there's this little girl that was born without any legs. In Greenville, South Carolina. And <clears throat> so they had found a white German Shepherd puppy born with just one front paw and it was meant for something special so the, the nine-week-old found a new home with this little girl who had lost both of her feet I guess she had lost them she had to have them taken off when she was born I see um, 
a lot of kids don't see other children or animals that have issues like they have uh, a three-year-old yes he was three years old uh, he watched his little girl toss a squeaky toy to the pup this was a really nice thing he said and a really good thing for her um, so it it looked really healthy and everything and the little girl was I saw a picture of her raising up her leg to uh, I said I thought I said she lost her legs she didn't have any feet that's mm -hmm. what it was she had her legs but didn't have no feet or a prosthetic feet and while she was raising up her leg and putting the sock on it for her prosthetic the little dog raises his paw up that he didn't have and Breeders, there was some breeders that suggested to put the dog down, and uh, they knew it wasn't no consideration there. So uh, many of the dogs became therapy dogs that were going to people with special needs. So they decided to call the Shriners Hospital, and uh, her the woman's father was a Shriner, so she'd been a patient. This girl, girl, been a patient since she was three months old, and when I was seven months pregnant. They said I did an ultrasound and told us she made me missing some fingers and toes, and they don't know what caused it, but she had two really long toes on each foot, and when she was one, we had them amputated so she could be fitted for a prosthetic. So when they found this dog, they said they had to go get that dog for her, and they showed some pictures of them playing together and sleeping together and you know it was just it was awesome and uh, we'll get that uh, web link on there for you to read about more about that and so that was it about the uh, the, the, the dog without a paw uh, you got anything else you want to add with any of that or no, not really. No, not really. Okay. I mean, I think it's kind of neat that rather than putting an animal down, that they say, hey, you know, this will be an inspiration for this girl, and it'll give the puppy a home, so the puppy will be happy. Right. I don't understand why people want to put an animal down just because, like, he's missing a paw. Yeah. Oh, what's what's the big deal? It's not like he can't get around or and he's healthy. That's like the turtle we seen the other day on there. The one with the wheels? Yeah. The guy added the wheels to the turtle rat, shell. Mm -hmm. A rat got a hold of this turtle and, and damaged his front feet. They had to amputate the, the turtle's feet. And so what do you do? A turtle can't go nowhere. All right. Well, this one guy, he decided that he was going to make a prosthetic legs for this turtle but yeah. they was too short they they cut so much off that it was too short to connect it to anything and so he made a set of wheels <laughs> look like little uh, wheels off your barbecue grill yeah and he took some metal and fitted the metal around the shell on over the top and under the bottom <laughs> and attached the wheels to it and then attached it to the turtle and that turtle gets around yeah, well he does he get around he they said he can go forward backwards and turn and everything and it just looks kind of odd um well but, there's always a way to help an animal rather than put them down I right mean, just one little defect is no reason to say well that animal is no good for anything yeah I mean, people keep keep their kids with defects and, yeah. and they they put all the money they can into it to make them healthy and happy and what's what's the difference uh, an animal is also a life i look at it like this they have feelings like we do and they hurt like we do right. so why do you want to mistreat them right i mean we've taken in animals that were so close to dying it that most vets would have said put it down, but we actually kept them, and it took a lot to do, but we nursed a lot of them back to health. I mean, a couple of them didn't make it, but we have gotten a lot of animals that we've helped. I gotta get Susie on here one day, and let her talk about her dog, or her cats, <laughs> and, uh, I asked her, what, last week or something, I said, if she would be on the show, and she said, uh, I might have to sneak them recorder over there and uh, and do that. But. And hope she don't listen, because she'll be mad. <laughs> but anyway, she's, um, 
how many? Nine? Nine, nine? nine cats now, I think. Nine cats. All from scratch, I guess you'd call it. They was found and... They were cats that people... One of the, Some of the cats we have, somebody saw them throwing them out of a car window going down the road. And some of them were found in boxes on the side of the road and some of them were dropped off back here. So they're all basically dropped off animals that we've taken in. Mm. And and they're and they're trained. I mean, they're they're they the, they got them trained to, to, you know, to listen to you. They they know their names now. And they're the best animals ever. I mean, there was they were just sweet animals. And she was up in the northern part of Ohio uh, visiting <laughs> one day. Uh, I guess they was there for about a month, maybe. Mm -hmm. And they found a cat up there, a kitten. Yeah. And they brought it home. I think they said that was one out of seven that that survived. The rest of them didn't, so they brought it home with them. Yeah, so I uh, can't let that one go past us, you know. It's like, yeah, I... We love animals. <laughs> what can we say? If we can't do it, though, we won't. Yeah. You know, I mean, it doesn't make sense to... If, if there's... Just because there's an animal out there that's without a home and things, you know, you can't just bring them all home well we kind of do yeah they <laughs> <laughs> that's how we ended up with 20 cats at one time yeah yeah <laughs> but they were all healthy all fed all went to the vet when they needed to so what can you say yeah uh i know a lady one time that found a cat it was a kitten she went to a grocery store and got out of a car Went in and did her shopping, and when she came back out, there was a kitten kind of rubbing up against her wheel of the car. Yeah, well, she knew right there that, you know, it didn't have a tail. The tail been missing. Oh. We, you know, you know, where did it go? Who knows? A dog might have bit it off, or another cat. Anything could have happened to that. Uh, there were possums and things up there, and uh, well, raccoons anyway. She brought it home and uh, took care of it, and it grew up. It was all white, and she says, you know, the cat's kind of funny because when when she opens up the food to feed them, all, I think she had three other ones, but when she opened up the food to feed them, the cat never came over to the bowl for a while. As soon as she popped the lid off of that can, the other cat's whoosh, right in there. Mm -hmm. And this cat waited a while before it came. And, but, you know, she didn't know. She wasn't thinking. So, uh, when she'd come home from work and she'd open up the door, the cat would be up in the window looking out and stuff behind the couch. But when she opened up the door, the cat would turn around and run towards her. Okay, like, you're home. All right. That, the oddest thing was, when she turned on her vacuum cleaner, the cats would just gone. Cats scatter when you turn on a vacuum cleaner. This one, get up on top of it and ride it around. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, found out that the cat was deaf. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't hear that noise, and that's why it waited until. Uh, it smelt the food before it came running to the to the food bowl. And the door, when she opened up the door, uh, they said that it uh, had something to do with the air pressure change in the house. When you pull that door yeah. open, it, it changes the air pressure, and the cat felt it. That's why it ran to you when they, when you come through the door. And that, that was a, that was awesome though, but they say that um, well I don't remember what the percentage was, but it was pretty high that a, a cat with uh, that was all white and a certain color of eyes, blue I think, blue that uh, there was a high percentage of them that are deaf, and you don't know it until you, but you know she liked the cat. She didn't get rid of it because it couldn't hear you. No, of course. Yeah. 
and and if you get in the view of it, you know, and wiggle your fingers, it come running to you. Mm-hmm. Learn sign language real quick. Oh yeah, yeah, and so it's just that it, it, they miss out on a lot of things that the other cats get to hear. Uh, I had one time <laughs> one of those climbing poles that goes up to your ceiling. It was so probably about. Uh, this, about as round as the size of a mayonnaise jar, a large mayonnaise jar. Okay. And it had a spring-loaded top in it. And you put it on the floor. Well, it's like a cut, uh, uh, what is it, shower, shower rods are like that, where you the spring-loaded, where mm-hmm. you pull it back and put it up there, and then the spring hold it on there. Well, this one held it to the ceiling. And there was three tiers on it that where the cats could play on them and, and run around up and down and everything and I was sitting on the couch one day watching TV more more watching the cats than I was the TV because they was all up there playing on that and I guess <laughs> it, it, the spring lost its tension or something but the one cat was up at the top of it on the top pier and it started to fall it came loose from the ceiling <laughs> Oh, and it was too late to do anything about it. It was falling right towards me. Oh wow! And that cat was holding on, but when it got about halfway down, the cat jumped on me because that's the direction it was going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, <clears throat> uh, they got five five claws on each paw. I had twenty. I had twenty puncture marks in my chest. <laughs> That cat had hung on to me when he when he hit me. He hung on to me, and oh, the pain! Oh, you're lucky it wasn't a cat like Bigfoot. You would have had 24 puncture marks. Well, yeah, that was like that cat. Yeah, I had a cat. It, my grandmother had a cat that, out of every litter of cats she had, there was one cat that had an extra claw on each foot both front and both back so it ended up with 24 Hmm. and let me tell you I had a dog come in my house and I kept telling this guy keep the dog away from my cat my cat's gonna hurt that dog I ain't gonna hurt that dog I said please take the dog away well he decided he was gonna bring the dog nose to nose with my cat Uh my cat jumped on this dog's nose and hooked every claw it had around this dog's mouth (laughs) and that dog went shooting out of the house howling and I felt bad for the dog I tried to tell him that the cat would hurt the dog because I didn't want to see the dog hurt but he just wouldn't listen and my cat went after him dog wouldn't come near my door again (laughs) I had to go out and baby the poor dog because I felt bad for it yeah speaking of doors that uh, brought up uh, something else that I was wanting to talk about too. Um, well, we we're, we're calling him the crazy guy in California. Overly brave. Overly brave. Person. Overly I'm brave. I'm telling you what, this guy he was like uh, seventy four. I'm thinking seventy three, seventy four. I don't yeah. remember. Yeah, and he got a little Chihuahua. Former boxer, former marine. Oh yeah. You know, you know, you know this guy's going to be tough at 73 years old. Oh, yeah. Um, he didn't look it. <laughs> I would have never thought he would have did this. There was His little chihuahua was outside, and he heard this ruckus going on. And he went to look to see if the dog was all right, because it said it was a, a different, different sound than what he usually makes. Mm-hmm. And he looked out the door, and there was this bear standing there getting ready to have lunch uh-huh. with his chihuahua and the guy said he was on the news and I'll try to dig that up and put it on there too it was it was funny the way that this guy was all excited and, and because he went out there and he punched the bear in the face with his fist turned knocked, the bear's head halfway yeah, around he said, yeah he said turned his head <laughs> He said, I've never been afraid of anything in my life, and I'm not going to start now. 
Yeah, he's a bear left. Took off. And I don't blame the bear. But he, <laughs> he was a character to listen oh, to on the yeah. news. He was. He was proud of that little, little instance. And you know, I thought I was crazy when I did what I did with that bear. Yeah, I tell you <laughs> about that bear. My mom, she, oh man, I thought she was going to smack me upside the head and ask me how dumb I was. I was out on the back porch. And this bear was right outside the screen where if he put his paw out, he could have touched the screen. So I was like three foot from him. Well, I've got all my cats out on the back porch. And the only thing I'm thinking is, you're not coming on this porch after my cats. That just ain't going to happen. So here I am. I get this chair and I'm banging it on the floor of the porch. And I'm screaming at it, get out of here, get out of here, you stupid bear, go away. The bear stands up. Well, the bear's only a foot and a half, two foot taller than I am. And he's three feet from me. And he's looking straight at me. And I'm sitting here just shaking this chair, screaming. Well, finally, it turned around and looked at me. I guess the look on his face just kind of told me he's thinking, Okay, that is one crazy woman. I'm leaving because she scares me. <laughs> and he left. You got a picture of that bear. No, I don't I, anymore. Oh, I do. I've got it on there somewhere. You got it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have it anymore. But my mother said, what is wrong with you? I said, my cats were on the porch. I'm not going to let a bear get to my kitty cats. Yeah. So I guess I was a little crazy, but I'm not silly enough to walk up and punch the bear. Well, that's like me. You know, these these cats around here, I I haven't been around them that long. But when that one brave cat walked out there towards the fox... That fox is chasing the cat. Yeah, it's um, the cat wanted, just wanted to go up and see the fox, and the fox didn't think that was a good idea, so that fox hunched up his back just like a, a cat would. Mm -hmm. And he was getting ready to kind of turn his head a little bit sideways there and looking at that cat. And the closer the cat got to him, the higher up his back was arching. Yeah, we had to go get and the cat. I went out there and got the cat. I didn't care about the fox. The fox would run from me. Yeah, I, I got one out here in the yard. Remember that day, that that night that that fox was out there yeah. stalking a cat? And yeah. I ran out toward the fox to get it away from the cat. Yeah. Cat took off one way, fox took off the other. So we don't have to worry about animals getting to our cats as much as we have to worry about the cats getting to the animals. Yeah, our cats aren't real smart. They're not smart. <laughs> they think it's just a dog and something to be play with. Well, the one cat thinks everything should be its friend. Uh -huh. I mean, they're, they're sweet, lovable cats, and they love everybody, and they don't think anything is their enemy. But, you know, we don't want them to learn the hard way. Like the one day that Mom was telling me that one of the raccoons was out here, and one of our cats took off running at it and rolled that raccoon across the yard. <laughs> she said she was in a panic thinking that raccoon was going to tear her cat up, but the raccoon looked at the cat like, what was that about? And then turned off and walked the other way. <laughs> and I thought, man, that is crazy. Well, you see the two raccoons getting into a brawl. Oh, man, and they're you, mean. You'd think they could really tear a cat up. But they could. Yeah. Actually, they really but could. I think they know that the cats belong here, too. It could be, and they're not, they, they're not raccoons, so they don't tend to fight with them like the raccoons yeah. fight with each other. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. We got some silly animals around here, but we love them all. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see my little checklist here. I had another thing. I haven't found that rabbit, that article I had on the rabbit. I was just going to talk about the rabbit. Uh, anyway, uh, how big they got and everything. It was the uh, Florida rabbit. And I know... Uh, Greg had a picture of a rabbit. Oh, scroungy looking. Oh, that poor baby. <laughs> he look. He look. He was. He was scroungy, but he was cute. Greg, why didn't you give that rabbit a bath and groomed him down a little bit before you took a picture of him? <laughs> yeah, it would have helped. <laughs> poor baby. But you know, it, out out in Arizona, though, rabbits are a little, a little more. Um, you know. I don't know what the word is for it, but scroungy. Oh, okay. Looking. So they're scroungy looking? Yeah. 
I don't know why, but out here they're all nice and furs all look like it's being groomed every day before they go out, mm -hmm. you know. But this one just, whoa, oh man. But it didn't look like there was anything wrong with it. it just no. just looked like it just woke up at a, and, and took off, you know. Had a bad hair day. Bad hair day. Hair day, huh? <laughs> Good shot there, Greg. Oh. I haven't seen any bad shot sh uh, photos from Greg yet. Oh, I like his photos. Uh huh. Yeah, they. Uh, he's doing real good, and he's still. Um, I think he's going to be starting to work on his second book now. He oh, just, there you go. He just had his first book published here a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, hadn't it? Uh, Greg's backyard birdies, and if you go to Google and search Greg's backyard birdies. You'll find lots of places where you can buy that look. It's uh, it's an online book right now. They might might have some in a store somewhere, but uh, right now it's all online. Uh, iTunes, um, uh, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Barnes and Noble. There are a few other places also that's got it. Mm -hmm. But you'll see all that when you. Type that in the Google search. Have plenty of places to choose from. Oh yeah. Uh huh. So, uh, <clears throat> the only other thing I was going to talk about was the uh, Arizona bighorn sheep. Oh, those are neat. Are they? Oh yeah. I've seen and, pictures of them. Oh, uh, pictures. <laughs> You're going to tell me a story about one of them. Oh no, I've never actually uh, seen one in person. I've seen pictures. Okay. But I was talking to Ken. About a week ago, and telling him about the panthers down here and how how they uh, protected them and everything, and he said that uh, bighorn sheep out there in Arizona are the same way. He said they were uh, dropping in their uh, what would you call population. it population? That, yeah, that it was dropping pretty bad out there. Wow! Uh, people were just going out and shooting them. Why? It doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you do that? Yeah. But uh, the bighorn sheep is one of two species of mountain sheep in North America. And they range in color from light brown to grayish or dark brown. Have a white rump and a lining on their backs of all four legs. Bighorn sheep get their name from the large curved horns on the males or rams. They're legendary for their ability to climb high, steep, rocky mountain areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, the population at the beginning of the 19th century, there was about one and a half million to two million bighorn sheep in North America. Today, there's less than 70,000. Wow, that's a big drop. Right. Um they live in herds or bands of about 5 to 15 ewes, lambs, yearlings, and 2-year-olds. Groups of male are much smaller, usually numbering 2 to 5. In the winter, the ewe herds join to create bands as many as 100 animals. Um, their gestation is 5 to 6 months, and all springs one lamb. So mm -hmm. it's not... Uh, so we are looking at maybe two a year yeah. from each female. Uh, lambs are born with a soft, woolly, light-colored coats and small horn buds. Huh, they already got the buds on there. Wow. Within a day, a lamb can walk and climb as well as its mother. Wow. A lamb will stay with its mother for its first year of its life. And threats on them, of course, the first thing they're going to put is hunting. Mm -hmm. Loss of food, livestock gazing, and disease from domestic livestock have devastated bighorn sheep population. Wow. And it just goes on and on here. Uh, you want to read more about that, I'll uh, put that link in the show notes, too. So... Uh, other than that, the only thing I really left out that I wanted to talk about today was the rabbit. <laughs> and but anyway, uh, we did talk a little bit about it. I just didn't have all the information, uh, you know, the, the the right name for them and stuff like that. But maybe we could throw that in there on the show notes. Yeah, I'll find it. <clears throat> so anyway, 
Uh, we, we're 40 minutes into the show here. Hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually made it that far without stopping. Yeah, we did. Gee, we're we good. We usually take a little pause and, and maybe get us some more soda. I don't think we want to pause. We want to get it done we so we can get, get out of this heat. We want to get get the air back on. Yeah. <laughs> we're wimps. Uh, well, yeah, that might be interesting, too, just to maybe to share uh, with people what the temperature is. I don't know. Everybody... Everybody has different temperatures where they're at. I want to go back to Ohio where it's cold. Oh, it's not cold up there now. It's been up in the 60s and so. Oh, well, I want to go back to Ohio then. But today here in uh, in uh, southwest Florida, it's only, uh, it only got up to 84. Uh oh. And that's what it is right now. It's 84. It feels like 86. <sighs> uh, 55% humidity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 10 mile an hour wind. Where? It's not in here. We don't. I don't see it out there either. I, I'm afraid to open the windows and let that hot air in here. <laughs> I know. So anyway, that's uh, that's what the temperature here is. And if we look at the 14-day forecast for this part, uh, today 84, and then 82, 84, 84, 86, uh, 86, 86, 82, 88, and 88. So it's it's gonna be pretty decent. I want sixties and seventies. <laughs> that ain't happening though, is it? No. It's, oh well. It's not gonna happen. So anyway, <clears throat> if anybody out there's got anything they want to talk about, anything interesting they want to bring up, mention to us to talk about on the radio, send us an email at naturetalk at outlook dot com. Or you can just drop us a voice message at speakpipe.com slash hikerjames. And that's spelled H-I-K-E-R-J-A-M-Z. If you don't spell it the way it's supposed to, you won't find it. I'll put that on the show notes too where you can just click on it and bring it up. It's, there you a, little, go. it's a little recorder. You just you got ninety seconds, you know, you can record what you want to say and then send it and I'll get that. Who also on hikerjamestalkshow dot com is our website. We have things on there that you can look at and do. And that's spelled the same way, H I K E R J A M Z. And that's hikerjamestalkshow.com. Okay. Uh, anything else we need to bring up? It's, uh, it's 43 minutes into the show, so I'm going to call it quits. Yeah, I think we got everything we had wrote down to talk about. Yeah, pretty much. So let us know what uh, you'd like to hear about. Uh, we Maybe we're going to switch over to some uh, different things, some trees or some uh, plants or whatever. We got our new uh, uh, cards the other day in the mail that we ordered for our Nature Talk podcast show. <laughs> we ordered? I ordered them. I yeah. didn't know about them. Yeah, I ordered it. Um, we got a uh, a good deal on it. I keep saying we, don't I? Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so maybe I'll take scan that on there and let everybody see it. So. There you go. Okay. Um, you got a minute left so hey we'll catch you all next week hope you enjoyed the show until then see see ya. ya